And our single goal is What up, mini family? Recently, I went to Adepticon. This is the fifth year in a row I've gone and I freaking love it. I took a few classes, I mingled with other miniature painters, hit up the vendor hall, met some fans, and I had a fun Miniac meetup with all of you. As many of you know, I also entered into Crystal Brush and to pull the knife out of the wound early on in the video. While I did make final cut with my piece, which is awesome, didn't do worse than last year, I didn't place in my category. In first place was Andy Wardle's Dorn. In second place was Neil Hollis's Kamar. Kamarg? Kamarg. <gasps> and third place was Steve Garcia's Perseus. I learned a lot in this process of preparing an entry for Crystal Brush, entering it, and kind of seeing the results. Good things about myself, bad things about myself. And I also got a lot of great feedback about my specific entry, which I know is something people say a lot, but I really mean it this year. And I want to share it all with you guys. And I want to start with the most important piece of advice that I think I could have. Never, actually, you know what? Let me just let Rafaela Pica do it. You are much more attached to your piece than to the others. Right. Because all the other pieces are like just painted models by different painters. But yeah. your piece has emotional value in it from yeah. yourself. So you kind of overvalue that aspect of the final product. For the other painters, it's the other way around yeah so they just see what you painted they just see the model and the paint but you see the emotional value and if you invest a lot of time uh, the emotional value that you have in this piece it's very high never underestimate the emotional investment that you have in something that you have worked a lot on I'm not gonna lie I thought I was going to get at least third in single figure and when I didn't even place I was really bummed out and I got over it in a few hours, but I have to acknowledge the fact that I was viewing the world through rose-tinted glasses. So, how can you learn from me? I think a good first step is just being aware of this potential for emotional investment, and that awareness can help you manage expectations. I thought I was doing that, but very clearly based on how I felt after the fact, I wasn't doing the greatest job. I don't know, maybe this is just a problem with me personally because I have such a large ego and people who are more selfless may not struggle with this so much, but either way, I think it was probably a healthy experience for me. 
Another obvious lesson to learn here is time management. I really underestimated how much time it would take me to convert the witch, build the base, and also do the video series on it. So I think probably two weeks before the event itself, I hadn't even put a base coat down on my entry yet, which is not where you want to be. I should have just listened to past Scott. Give yourself the time to do what you want to do. Another valuable lesson is about burnout. And some of you guys might have picked up on the emotional lulls that I had in this process via watching the video series. There was definitely a time when I was not at all interested in painting this miniature, but I did it because I was making a video series for it. So the lesson that can be learned here is that if you know you want to accomplish something, having something or someone to keep you accountable for your goals is incredibly helpful. Obviously, not everyone can have a YouTube community as great as mine that kind of keeps me honest about what I want to do, but you can do something as simple is just telling someone what your goals are and they can kind of keep you accountable for accomplishing them. And the last big thing that I learned about doing this whole process was about fire lit scenes. I painted my miniature like there was a big soft light source below her. And let me explain that. In a normal miniature painting scenario for myself and probably for a lot of other people, they paint their miniatures like the environment is a bright, cloudy day with a big soft light source above. They don't do harsh light. And I took that idea and I rotated it 180 degrees so that big light source was below my witch. But in reality, in a fire lit scene, the fire, because it's so intense a light and kind of smaller a light when compared to the sky, you get much harsher highlights and much harsher shadows. It isn't so soft and diffused. So to adjust for this, I should have had really intense highlights, especially toward the fire, and really sharp cut shadows. And I could have figured this out if I looked at some source material before doing this. So if you're trying out something new, looking at real world examples can really help you to kind of set up your paint plan in a good, accurate way. All right, those are all of the personal things that I learned in my crystal brush voyage of 2019, but I also got a lot of great feedback from other miniature painters that I wanna share with you now. Ben comments gave me some great feedback. The first piece was that the shadow on my backdrop did not match the color of the shadow on the ground. The backdrop was blue and the ground was dark and those needed to be consistent in colors. And he was totally right. That was a complete oversight on my part. He also mentioned that the OSL was so bright and vibrant toward the bottom of the miniature. So when you picked it up, you were ultimately looking at the bottom of her dress instead of her face, which is totally right. I found myself doing that whenever I picked up my miniature, staring at her feet instead of her face. He said one way you could solve this is via putting some pink OSL under her chin to kind of draw some of that attention up to the face. But a better idea that him and I kind of discovered while chatting was more of a narratively driven one. He said that you could have the fire resisting her skin, like it was making a tornado around her and not burning her. This would draw the fire up higher, draw the OSL effect up higher, and put the attention on the face. And I know I kind of wanted her to be happy about dying. That's why it's called homecoming, because when she dies, she's going to hell, which is why she's got this crazy grimace on her face. But fire tornadoes are pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Kat Martin, one of the crystal brush judges, said she wasn't convinced about my fire sculpting. She said you just plopped it right on top of the logs, which totally guilty as charged is exactly what I did. I need to better integrate them into the wood to make it look like they're not just sitting on top of the fire like, I don't know, like muffins or something. She said also that the fire intensity wasn't strong enough toward the base of the dress and the logs and also the surrounding ground. 
Jose Palomares said the miniature I picked was a bad miniature. I was doing me a disservice. He also said that either the face wasn't detailed enough or I did a bad job painting it. It was probably the model. He also gave me interesting insight into how long you should spend on a face. He said if you're spending 100 hours painting a project, 60 of those hours should be spent painting the face. You know, in truth, I don't know what I would do with 60 hours painting such a tiny face, but maybe it's more about you should just spend longer on the face than you think you are than being specifically a 60% breakdown. Steve Garcia, who absolutely destroys the single figure category every single year at Crystal Brush, gave me some great narrative ideas. He said, if the witch is possessed, which I guess she could be, you could give her some veiny skin, or I could make her sweat like it was glistening on her forehead, or her dress was kind of drenched near her armpit areas. These are fantastic ideas that drive the narrative for what I was going for. <laughs> Benjamin Cantor, Michael Pasarski, and Eric Swinson, who is a new painter that I met this year, who painted a wonderful Wolverine bust. All three of them said that the pink OSL should probably be stronger along the entire scene, given that it is the only source of light in the scene. But, you know, to be honest, I just didn't want to bathe the whole scene in hot pink, and I will fight you to death on this. <laughs> That's all the wonderful feedback that I got about my crystal brush entry. If any of these miniature painters that I mentioned have an online presence, I'll have it linked in the description below, and hopefully this can pay them back for the time they spent analyzing my piece and giving me valuable feedback. Also, thank you to everyone who went on Crystal Brush's absolutely awful website and voted for my piece. If you actually order the single figure entries in terms of popular vote, I got second place, which is probably because I have a large online community, but it feels good nonetheless. And last but not least, first place in Resident Beast's inaugural competition for his amazing plague angel is John Venus. John, let's get a Thank you for checking out my series about my crystal brush entry. This brings it to an end. One quick announcement before we end this video. A lot of people have been asking me about when I'll get t-shirts back in stock. Well, next week they'll come back in stock and I'll also have a new t-shirt that you can get, the Miniac Black Metal Logo t-shirt. And also patrons are gonna get something a little bit extra with this logo on it. So stay tuned in the week to figure out what that is. All right, back to ending this video. I learned a lot about making a video series where each video is supposed to compel the viewer to watch the next one. And while I didn't do a great job, I had a lot of fun experimenting with the format. If you guys have any feedback for me, either positive or negative, feel free to leave it in the description below so I can improve next time I do something like this for 2020, perhaps. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, you can find several links in the description that enable you to do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, such as a Discord server where you can hang out with me any day of the week and discuss your miniature painting projects, but also things like seeing my videos one week early and also getting the opportunity to win something that I painted on this channel more than likely. You can also find down there an Amazon shopping link that you can use while shopping on Amazon. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget... Hey!